Hi guys, hi again, welcome to one more episode in Pico. So unfortunately I've not been able to climb the, the mountain so far and I think with my schedule it won't be possible because you need at least 7-8 hours to do the round trip. But I've seen it a bit so it's fine but weather is not really on my side and so it's a bit sad. But it's okay because I'm gonna try very nice wines. Uh, at a company I'm really looking forward to uh, to visit, which is the Azores Wine Company. So I've heard about it and it sounds like it's, it's really great what they are doing and the whole concept, the place they are in. So everything is really well thought and it's very, very nice looking, very good. So cannot wait to talk with them. It's going to be great. The Azores Wine Company was founded in 2014 and is the result of the partnership of three men. The famous Portuguese winemaker Antonio Massanita from Alentejo, former director of the Azores Hotel and Tourism Training School Felipe Rocha, and Picobon winemaker Paulo Machado. Since its inception, the company has played a vital role in regenerating the winemaking tradition on Pico Island, starting with the recovery of about 100 hectares of vines. They brought a wind of innovation in the local wine by making monovariety wines where the tradition was more to do blends. They also did sparkling wines and a lot of research on red wines as well as fortified wines. They participated greatly to putting the island on the map by creating a strong brand that is starting to be recognized all across the world and pushing the quality of the wine up. Nowadays, they are with the Pico Cooperative the largest winery in the Azores. They trained a new generation of local winemakers and in 2019 they invested a lot of money into a new wine tourism project in the form of a state-of-the-art winery of great beauty. This work designed by architects has a very brutalist vibe to it and is completely integrated in the Kuhaish landscape. It is there that I had a meeting to do an interview on Pico Wine. I was very well received and I had the pleasure of trying most of their wines. To me at the moment, they are at the upper end of the quality that is produced in the Azores, which is also visible in the price of the wine that is practiced. My favorite of their wines was the one done with Tirantes du Pico, a unique grape variety that creates a very subtle and delicious wine. After getting a tour of the winery, the Azores Wine Company's managing director, Philippe Rocha, very nicely accepted to answer my questions on the company, its projects, and the future of winemaking in Pico Island. This project started an informal way about 12 years ago. So, um, I met Antonio in 2007, so I was the director of a hospitality and culinary school in San Miguel, where I am from. And I invited Antonio to, to teach some wine and food pairing classes to my students. And at that time, Antonio uh, just felt that he wanted to do something in, uh, in the islands. He started as uh, a teacher on this uh, on these classes, but he met a lady uh, called Susana Mestre in 2010 uh, from the Agriculture Department uh, in San Miguel that uh, told him about the project of recovering an old grape varietal that was almost extinct called Trantes do Pico. It was something that they never heard about it, so they came to Pico and they uh, went to the vineyards and they counted less than 100 plants of Trantes do Pico. Genetically, they found out that uh, Trantes do Pico is a unique grape varietal in the world, only exists in the Azores. They wanted to rescue this grape, so they planted a test field in São Miguel. And uh, from that test field, Antonio wanted some challenge uh, in Azores because his father is from São Miguel Island, so that's why his big connection to Azores. He did his first wine in Azores in 2010. From Trantes do Pico, just uh, about 600 bottles 
sold to the main restaurants in Lisbon and in Belgium. It was a huge success. Uh, this, um, this project, uh, we did a, a wine dinner in, uh, in Lisbon uh, with the wine critics to launch the wine. And uh, it was super interesting for everybody because at that time nobody uh, was talking about wines from Azores. I, at that time I used to uh, uh, work a lot uh, with projects related to agriculture, to products, local products in the different islands. I used to come to Pico uh, and started working with the local uh, wine producers. And in 2013, uh, we had the chance to join uh, Paulo uh, at his winery to do another wine from another grape. So we joined the three of us in the harvests and Antonio did for the first time an Arinto dos Açores, another grape varietal unique in the world that has nothing genetically to do with the Arinto in mainland Portugal. And it was the opportunity to do another uh, different wine, this time in Pico Island. So we joined the three of us and, and, uh, and in 2014, we actually founded the Source Wine Company. Uh, we started working on the, on the idea of this winery in 2015 uh, and actually we went to France, uh, to La Loire, uh, to see some small wineries. Uh, we did not want the big uh, houses that uh, we know that exist in France. We wanted to go to La Loire, actually because at that time also uh, Antonio knew that uh, there was uh, uh, a producer that had value. Uh, so, it was uh, interesting and, and for him also um, the wines from La Loire uh, reminded him a little bit on this profile of, um, of the wines of, uh, of Azores. And also we wanted to have a winery that could definitely bring the meaning of the word adega in Pico. So adega in Portuguese means winery, adega in Pico means much more than that. So. And Adega in Pico is a place where the old people used to do wine. So uh, actually in the beginning, many uh, uh, years ago, uh, people did wine in their small Adegas, but it's a small house where people get together with their friends. Uh, so they always have a table where they invite their friends. They don't invite the friends to their house. They invite their friends to their Adega. And, and also sometimes where you can sleep. So there is uh, always, um, a bed or a small room where people can sleep in the adaga. So we wanted to have our own adaga, our own winery, to produce our wines, but also to have a table, a place where people get together. So that's why the restaurant or the tasting room, um, and also where people can sleep. So this is not a hotel, it's a winery where you can sleep. Uh, that was the idea and uh, the whole project was uh, big challenge because uh, we wanted to respect the place, we wanted to respect the landscape. It's a protected landscape, so that's why all the facility is covered by stones. So, um, but at the end, uh, something that can uh, can also bring a new era to uh, to the wines in, uh, in Pico and to the wine tourism in the, in the region. experience about coming here, uh, someone that is not from here doing, uh, doing wines here, uh, I think uh, the contribution that we, I think we also did was always uh, paying attention to have everybody on board. We always uh, get together with all the producers, we are not that much. <laughs> still even when we invite wine critics when we invite the press when we invite uh, people related with the wine world we always want everybody to be together and i think the co-op that is uh, the biggest uh, producer today ha has been playing a very important role on that too because they understand that everybody has uh, has improved with this uh, with this new era in, uh, in Azores, they want their wines improved, uh, our wines pushed a little bit the region up. And, um, and I think uh, we have really a good, uh, a good relationship because uh, the Azores is the most important thing. And I think the biggest challenge we face 
is keeping on this standard, on this level, uh, and also on this price point, because you, it's not cheap to make wines here. So it has to be like that. So the wines have to, to, uh, to respect the place, and of course they have to be representative of the effort that everybody has to, to grow grapes here. And uh, we just want good producers here in, in, in the Zoos. So as long as there are good producers, I think everybody is, is uh, having a good relationship. Yeah, when we talk about innovation, uh, Sometimes it looks like about techniques and 21st century ideas and, uh, uh, and equipments and tools. And, and I think uh, what we did is nothing related with that. So Antonio Masanita is, uh, is always looking for, for a different perspective on things. And uh, when nobody was looking at the source, he looked at the source. So, um, and uh, and I think that's that's the the innovation that uh, we brought. So uh, people were doing wines, but um, how did Narinto uh, Source taste it? How did Vardaio taste it? How did Trentes do Pico taste it? And we didn't know because there was almost no wines uh, with just a single varietal so that we could taste, we could know how they were. So, and I think that's, that's what we, uh, we could call innovation, is uh, just respecting the product, respecting the grapes, just low intervention, that's uh, Antonio's philosophy. And um, it's just tasting what it is, tasting how it is, a grape uh, coming from a vineyard with eight years old. That's it, just, you don't blend it with nothing else, you just, have this grape from this vineyard and try it. And I think uh, that's uh, that respect for the place, for the vineyard, for the history of that man that uh, um, kept this vineyard for years from his father and from his grandfather is just trying to know the place uh, better than we know today. Of course, we brought a different perspective uh, on, uh, on the way of communicating Azores of selling the Zors. Uh, when we arrived, uh, the grapes uh, were sold at about one euro a kilo, uh, 80 cents to one euro a kilo. In four years, we multiplied by four uh, the, the price of the grapes. Uh, so it's paying to people that have this hard work. So these vineyards, they produce 10 to 15% of a regular vineyard. Uh, the costs are double or triple the the regular cost of a regular vineyard, so it's, it, it doesn't make sense to make wines here. So, except if these wines are exceptional and if you get well paid for the grapes. So I think that's uh, another uh, perspective that we brought. So, uh, it, it's just respecting the place, respecting the product, and of course, um, doing in a different way looking at this uh, in a different perspective as the way we are looking uh, to the wine tourism in a different perspective. Uh, you, you have to be on a, uh, a different uh, a level of service, level of product, a level of quality of, of your uh, facility, of everything you serve. And uh, if you do that, people will look at you in a different way and uh, will uh, get excited about uh, what we have and about our history and I think that's the way we get different. Everything is a challenge in the island, so uh, uh, this viticulture system does not come on the books, so you can't read about it. Uh, you can learn from different experiences and, and try to uh, replicate the different things here, uh, but you definitely learn from the people here. But at the same time, uh, they they do it just because. I think the innovation that we were talking is also just um, putting on a different perspective. Why just we do like this? Just just because, or does it have? Does it make sense? And, uh, and I think Antonio has an amazing capacity to adapt to different places, 
Of course, we learn from from uh, from people here, but he's always looking uh, on the opposite side. And I think that's why we are working on the vineyards in a different way and in a scale, in, in a size that nobody did, at least in the past 150 years. Well, the, one of the main challenges uh, that we have to face is definitely labor force. First, these islands have a small population, so in, in that sense, it's, it's already difficult uh, to find uh, people. So, um, uh, but I think it, it's a balance. So as long as you, as you have great wine producers, as long as the wines have a good uh, price point uh, in the market, as long as you pay uh, good money for the grapes, people will come to, to, to work. What doesn't make sense is paying, uh, having low price wines with the low uh, uh, price on the grapes. And of course, there's nobody to work on the, on the fields. But I definitely think that's one of the biggest challenges and there should be a policy, a uh, government policy to uh, attract people to, to, to the islands, definitely. The day after the interview, I was invited to the reopening of the winery's restaurant by Felipe. When I arrived, which was a bit late, I happened to be the only customer, which gave me the opportunity to discuss with José, the chef, who despite his young age, had an amazing CV. He had worked all over the world with his girlfriend, Ines, who at the Adores Wine Company was in charge of the wine. They were both very good company and I really enjoyed discussing with them about their experience abroad and uh, their experience moving to Pico. The food itself was amazing. All the products were locally sourced and Jose does thorough research on how to use some local plants and products in his cuisine. This led to very modern dishes, combining local influences, modern techniques, as well as local and international cuisines. To say that this dinner was amazing is an understatement. I also tried more wines then, including a red from the island that had won several awards. Like all of their wines, these were great. The whole experience at the Azores Wine Company was perfect. Whether it is location, the food, the wine, the people, everything was on point. If you have the budget, I would 100% recommend you pay them a visit. You will not be disappointed. They have very unique wines, like wines done with vines that are more than 100 years old, or wine done with a very pungent grape called Isabella. If you're looking for unusual, you'll find it there. This is the end of this episode. Please don't forget to like and comment if you enjoyed it. That would definitely help push forward the channel, which, to be honest, kind of needs. Um, and on this, I wish you a great day, and I see you in the next one. Cheers!